Welcome back. Ah, oh, sorry, I needed water. Um, my name is CJ, and we are back at the Christopher Jewell Design tutorials page for Webflow information. Um, and today we're taking a look at a language toggle setup. So if you've got a client or if it's your own internal site or whatever the situation might be, and you have a site that you need to have translated between two different languages. In our case, it'll be between English and Spanish. We have set up a toggle you can see up on our top right side of the screen here from English to Espanol. And when you click this toggle, we have our page change quite obviously into Spanish across the board. And what's very cool about it is when you get into certain pages here, say that we're in our products, productos page, and let's flip it back to English. It'll keep us right exactly where we were on the page, right back into the English version. So, and let's try that one more time just to make sure that that's working. Yeah, uh, now we're in Spanish, beautiful. So, if what you're looking at right now makes sense to you and this is what you're trying to do, I will try to cover it as quickly as possible. Um, hopefully this is helpful. If this is not what you're looking to do, throw me a comment, um, you know, contact me in some way and we'll get a video for whatever it is that you wanna do. But hopefully this is useful. Um, to someone. Okay, so let's talk about exactly what's going on inside of this toggle. And for us to begin that conversation, it's going to start with the JavaScript with the custom code. So I will have this code written in the description as well. But why don't we just take a look at what's going on in this JavaScript here. So inside of the script, we're allowing the dog, the toggle to have a document query selector for the language toggle. Domain is the window location, so that allows us to keep the slug on the domain path name, and then we called it Spanish equals this domain, and that's our toggle set. So all, all you need, would need to do, for if you're not familiar with how this is working, is copy this entire script, and you need to change this link right here. And this link will take you to whatever site it is that we want to go to. So let's just, for example, while we're playing with it, actually, just trust me, just trust me, because I don't want to go through and play with it. Um, RecavaLifeTequila.com. So when we go back here, we're on RecavaTequila.com and we click our toggle and that takes us right to RecavaLifeTequila.com. And then again, I'll go over here to our locations, RecavaLifeTequila.com slash locations, and that'll bring us to RecavaTequila.com slash locations. So that's the whole setup. So I'll, I'll spare you the JavaScript lesson. This is all you need. And what you need to focus on changing is this little link right here. On top of that, you need to have the same class names as us, or as me. So let's go back into the designer and take a look at the class names and how it's set up. And we can build a new fresh one, but I don't think that's necessary. Um, I think if I just, you know, pause the video when I get to it here in a moment. But if we just open up our nav bar, you can see what we're doing inside of our container, inside of our flex panel. All the way on the right hand side, we have a button called language toggle. So this language toggle button is being linked to, and I should open this up again in our project settings in a new tab. And outside of our custom code, language toggle. So you have to name whatever the class is to match this JavaScript. And for us, it's language toggle. So for that reason, because there's a space between toggle, there's a dash. But for you, it, 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 if it looks exactly like this, then it should work perfectly fine. And then we should take a look at exactly how in the world that we set it up. So the important thing to understand is that you're going to have to have two domains. As we were looking at before, when we click through, we're switching from one domain to the next. You can set that up through a subdomain. I'm not going to get into that in, in this you know, little tutorial here, but if you're using a subdomain, it's very, very similar to what we're doing. Essentially, all we're doing is telling it to change the domain based on that toggle to a different domain, but retain the slug from the original domain. And that keeps it simple. So when you're setting it up inside of your nav bar, however you're, you know, however it's set up inside of here, all we have is a button and inside of that button, we have just a small little language switch PNG. This is a 46 pixel by 46 pixel uh, transparent circle. And, you know, I mean, you can make it your own, obviously, like if you, you can find a way to make this, but I'll try to link a file as well in the description. But um, it's just the circle that you're seeing that's moving right now. 
So that's the first setting. Next setting is when we go all the way down here, we have our mm -hmm -hmm. radius set as high as it'll go up to 20 pixels. So all that's doing is rounding it out so it looks like a little toggle. And then inside of it, we just have text that's running. So when I click it, you can tell there's just spaces. You see, it's just, uh, it's just spaces inside of there. Oops, let me go back and make sure it's the same. There we go. And then lastly, the last setting will be when you, when you import this uh, background image inside the language toggle, the language switch PNG on top of your colored background. That just needs to have a position that works for you. For me, go ahead and you know pause on this and I'll move over to the Spanish site momentarily, but I've got it left at 11 pixels centered, 50% top bottom, 11 pixels left for my current setup. That is also requiring a Montserrat size of 12 pixels. If you have a different typeface or a different size, you'll have to alter it. But for me, that's what we're using. And then over here inside of our dashboard, I'm just gonna open up the other site the Spanish one. So you see we have our regular site and our Spanish site. We'll open up the Spanish one so you can see the difference between the toggles. But essentially that first site, all you need to do once it's set up is duplicate it, translate it into whatever your language is gonna be. And then you can see the different settings for the toggle up here is that it is set to be at a 37 pixel instead of 11. And then up top when we get into the, actually it's not interaction, drop down on here into the hover that should have it set to bring right back down to 11 pixels on hover. And then when you see when it's off, you can see right here when it's off hover, it'll go back. And then we're gonna go back to our English site and it starts there and then on hover, it moves over to that 37 pixel spot. Oops, now it's 37. Eh, it should be 38 though, it should be 38 on both. So I'll fix that on the other one actually. But if that doesn't make sense, let me know. Um, you know, pause it if when we're on one of these screens here and, and um, you can use that to move forward. So that is literally the setup. So once you, you know, have gone through and you can, you can look at and see everything that's set up in here, it's just, uh, it's just a button with text on top of it and then an image that's sitting particularly, it's the, you know, the language switch PNG is sitting on one side or the other. For the English side, we want it to be sitting on the left. So let me turn off the hover setting and we've got it sitting 11 pixels left. So it's right on top of English. And like you can see, if I move it around up here, it's gonna be more centered, but we need that to be for my setup at 11 pixels. Um, and then you hover it and moves over to Espanol. And then over here on the Spanish side, it exists on the Espanol. And then we'll go all the way back just to make sure that you've got code implemented on both of these sites that is identical. And then we'll actually open up both of them so you can see the difference. So we're back on the English site right now. I can tell because it's just the Recava Life Tequila. And let Spanish equal bing, bang, boom, to the recavalifetequila.com. And then over here, this one's gonna push us back to recavatequila.com. So I'll just, maybe I will give one example. If I wanted it to go to, um, let's just, what's a random funny little site? Um, Crypto.com. Oops. So we'll save that on this site and we'll give it a publish. And again, this is on the Spanish side for me, but I just want you to see how that setting works. So if you just change that toggle to move into something else, let's open up the Spanish site. And then when we click the toggle, it'll just bring us over to crypto.com instead. Matt Damon, thank you very much. So I'm gonna go back in and fix this because I want to go to recavatequila.com, save changes. Published to take effect. We're gonna close crypto. Thank you, buddy. Mr. Matt Damon, lost a lot of money the last year. Hopefully you have too. And now when we try our toggle from recavalifetequila.com, we toggle it, should bring us back to Recava Tequila, and it will retain that same slug as planned, exactly. So if there's confusion, if there's questions on this, um, let me know, but it's a relatively simple setup. Um, 
there are ways that you can get it set up without having two domains. And then you're going to get into some custom software and you'll have to probably purchase a subscription from one of the companies that does it. I, I think for search engine purposes, it's ideal to have two different sites and you can have one of them listed on the Spanish. Or like for us, it's English and Spanish, but if it was any other languages, we've got one site listed as, let me open this up actually. Oops. I just need it to be in the uh, project settings. Just on your general settings, we've got this listed as an ES language code. So for search engines and things like that, when people search, it's going to be listed for Spanish search. And then the other site obviously is listed for English. Um, yeah, so I do recommend having two domains. Hopefully you're not doing e-commerce or CMS because that will get expensive to have two domains for that. But if you are, I still would recommend it. And hopefully it's within your budget based on sales. And I'll let you all you know, worry about that for your individual firms. But um, hopefully this is helpful. You know, leave a comment if there's questions. Um, send me a message. Visit luminatedenver.com. If you need any website work, feel free to contact us. Fill out a form, um, whatever it might be, and we'll, uh, we'll get you exactly what you need as soon as you need it. So thank you for watching. And um, yeah, good luck.